What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Car Mechanic Simulator 2021. As always, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you leave a like on the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. Today, we're going to be going around to a handful of different barn locations. I'm just assuming that we're not going to find like the car at the at the first place that we go to. So the game plan with this barn find is to hopefully find something in decent condition something that's not going to take a whole lot of work to actually get up and running and the main purpose of this vehicle is just going to be a flip just a straight up flip for us i'm not really trying to hold on to a vehicle right now i feel like it'd be kind of weird for us to do that just just starting out so i want to make it look nice i want to make it function but i don't necessarily want everything to be 100 percent durability or be as clean as it can possibly be so with that in mind let's go ahead and uh go to the first barn map location we first have to use that map sort of and then if we just go into our radial menu here we can now travel to the barn oh this is actually something i didn't think about it costs credits just to drive to the barn so Thankfully, it's only 100 credits. I think, like, the junkyard was 500 credits or something like that. So, we'll see, dude. I, I got I got a good feeling about being able to find something better than what we'd be able to find at the junkyard. Hopefully, something a little bit more complete, anyways. All right, here we are. So, we have... Oh, and I just got an achievement. First time at Countryside. I think that just means... Oh, we have to hold this to search. Interesting. Okay, so we can find some pretty nice parts in here i'm not here for the parts though i'm here for one vehicle one vehicle and one vehicle only i don't know what that vehicle is but i will i will know when i see it this is that's not the one <laughs> that is not the one come on we got anything else in here okay so we have two vehicles we have a bmw this looks to be an e46 ish yes okay oh and then there's a blue car like right here what the heck is this a celica no it's a, it's worse <laughs> It's worse. It's a Tiburon. Uh. Okay, we're not buying the Tiburon. We're certainly not buying the, uh... Oh, what are these called? I don't even remember what this thing is is actually called. Uh, Cobra, right? Right? A Shelby Cobra? Yeah, AC, AC Cobra. Not Shelby. What? A, same thing. Same, same. So like I mentioned, with this being our first barn that we've traveled to, I wasn't really expecting to find the car here, but the E46 really isn't a, a bad option necessarily it looks like we're missing a wheel up in the front everywhere else looks to be okay condition on the exterior a fender as well didn't notice that oh another wheel okay and maybe the rear wheel is what well. it might actually only have this one wheel on it so something to just keep in mind interior just looks kind of dirty doesn't look like it's uh super worn out or anything oh we can we can enable and disable our flashlight. What about the trunk? What do we got going on back here? Absolutely freaking nothing. Okay, so again, solid car. Wait, what engine does it have? V8. I just don't think it's the car. So we're gonna head back to the garage and uh, we'll try her again. You know what? No harm done. I should have at least checked to see how much the, the BMW actually cost to purchase. I, I just completely glossed over that. But uh, here we are at the next barn. We got a Camaro over here. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, because I, I liked the, the fender molding into the mirror. This actually isn't a bad car. It also has a V8, much like the BMW that we saw. What do they want for this bad boy? Tw 27,000? I mean, sure, in 1996, if this car were brand new, I would have probably given you 27 Gs for it. But today, nah. No, uh-uh. Especially in this... Well, it's not in rough condition, I guess. It's it's probably all there. It just uh, just needs cleaned up a little bit. But 27 is obviously out of our price range. We only have 20000 to our name right now. So let's go around. We'll see what else is in here. This thing is sick, dude. What is this? I love, like, these old, vintage, classic-looking cars. It also has a V8, a Buick Riviera. Dude, this is rad. How much do they want for this thing? 15! It's in our price range. It's a little bit more expensive than I was thinking for something this old. It's also missing rear wheel. It is missing the rear drums. Okay, it's missing every wheel other than one. Also missing valve covers and some rocker arms and some other things. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it, especially for that price. That just seems, seems a little steep. 
God, we are striking out so far, dude. We're going to keep moving right along here. See if we got anything else in this barn. This is also the largest barn that we've been in so far. This one seems quite a bit bigger than the uh, than the previous two that we've seen. What is this? Hang on. I got to try to at least guess before I just, like, open up the vehicle info and, and look. I want to say it's a Renault. Someone's going to correct me on the pronunciation and say, um, it's Renault. I don't know how to pronounce It's a Fiat anyways, so not really feeling the, the Fiat. Not really, not really digging that. Look at the livery, dude. It has like the, the Italy or Italian flag. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. <laughs> We're gonna return to the garage. We'll try her again. I'm not gonna go through all the barn maps though. I was really tempted to. I'll probably keep going until we have like three left. This is gonna be our second to last attempt here. We'll have one more try after this. If we strike out, I guess I guess it's just not meant to be. Right off the bat, we have a Corvette over here. 1970 Chevrolet Corvette for $21,000. Way too expensive. Way too expensive for that old of a vehicle. And then we have another... We literally just saw this and I already... It's a Fiat. I was going to say, we literally just saw it and I, and I already can't remember what it's called. Oh, and then we have a Trans Am, potentially? Yes, dude. What do they want for this bad boy? $27,000. Dude. Okay, I need to find some cheap, cheap cars. Let's see. Let's see the, the Fiat. The Fiat, honestly, better shape than the last one was in. Does it have all the wheels? It at least has all four of the wheels. It's not missing as many body panels as the last one we saw was. Looks like it's missing a fuel pump two ignition coils, maybe spark plugs as well. We could examine the vehicle. Should we examine the engine? Maybe, I mean, we have diagnostic tools for that. Let's let's do it anyways. We'll just, we'll just hold this down, get a little XP this way as well, but we can examine other components of the vehicle and figure out, you know, if we really, really want to purchase this thing. Last one. Okay, so everything is in rough condition as expected, but none of that was necessarily broken. We can take a look at the fuse box as well. Okay, that's just the base of the fuse box. Air intake system. Nice. I like how we can sort of examine things in a system by system basis you know we can go around to each suspension component we could go around to the cooling system the intake you know etc it's it's pretty sweet okay there's our first like really bad component with a broken outer tie rod i'm tempted i am definitely tempted can we swap the engine in this with something else does it have any possible swaps it does okay well we don't have a we don't have an engine stand yet or even an engine crane hoist, I don't think. So we would have to build up the entire engine inside of the engine bay, which is kind of a pain in the butt because then we'd also have to disassemble the original engine all inside of the engine bay as well. So maybe, yeah, maybe swaps don't really even matter. What does it have? An AQC inline four dual overhead cam only makes 130 horse. Well, okay. We're going to try, we're going to try the last one. We're going to try the last one, dude. All right. We're going to use the fourth barn map. So that's gonna leave us with three. So we pretty much have to buy something or we have to find something at the very least. Otherwise, we're probably just gonna be doing a, another story order for this episode, which I, I don't wanna do. We're already 20 minutes into a recording and we haven't really done anything yet. So I'm trying, you guys, I'm trying. I'm just, maybe I'm being a little bit too choosy, right? Oh God, and this is... This is the one barn where there's one car, I bet. What is this thing? Is this another Buick? Oldsmobile, maybe? What the heck is... Oh, Lincoln. Lincoln Continental Mark V. Wow, okay. I can dig this. I can dig this thing for sure. It's it's missing a couple of body panels here and there. All the wheels are there anyway, so it'll roll. We'll come back to it. We'll see if there's anything else in this uh, this barn here. Ooh, ooh, I love it. I love it. Wait, what is this? Is this a Tesla? It is Tesla Roadster for $32,000 or credits. Yeah, sorry. I'm going to pass on that one. But what about this thing? I always want to call this a Picador now just because of Grand Theft Auto. That's what their like lore friendly 
um, El Camino, like this car is. But in this game, it's called something completely different. Based off a 1969 El Camino for $21,000 credits, dude. I knew it was going to be just a little bit too overpriced for us. And I don't think examining anything actually brings the price down. I wish that were the case. How much did they want for the Continental, dude? Fifteen seven for the Buick. That would leave us with $5,000 left over. And we have to get it running if we want this flip to be, you know, successful. To be worth it, even in the slightest bit. So we're going to be needing a fender. Oh, God. Two fenders. Needs a bath. Probably gonna have to be painted. Looks like it's missing the steering wheel, which is interesting. Yeah, dude, we have to. We, ha I mean, this is the last barn. It's the cheapest vehicle here. It's, it's the only option, unfortunately. 1979 Lincoln Continental. We're gonna go ahead and buy it for 15.7. There it is, and we're gonna bring it right to the garage, dude, so we can get to work on her straight away. Oh, and we got another achievement: hidden treasure. Just from, uh, from purchasing our first barn find, I guess. Dude, this thing's honestly kind of sick. And I really, actually, I kind of like it. This was like, it was supposed to be a more luxury vehicle back in the day, right? So it's it's just big and boaty and I don't know, something about it. Some, especially the fact that it's a coupe. Like, you can't beat that. Well, you could, but that'd be weird. So before we do any actual work to this, I'm going to send it to the car wash, and we're going to get this thing cleaned off once and for all so we can see what's been hiding underneath the years of dust from uh, from being left in the barn. Dude, that's actually not that bad. The paint's a little rough. Like, uh, it's got some some nasty orange peel kind of kind of stuff going on to it, but it's it's all there, you know? I No complaints. No complaints. Let's clean the inside. Let's see if that cleans up as good as the outside. Interior honestly didn't look that bad before. Let's uh, check car status. If we sold it right now, having just simply cleaned the outside and the inside, we would be profiting 949 credits, which is kind of funny. But we're not just going to leave it at that, of course. There's, there's much, much more that we can do to this vehicle. So let's send it to car lifter A. We'll get this thing put up in the air, dude. So I realize we need a couple of body panels. I'm just first going to pop the hood. Ooh. Just so we can inspect what all is wrong with this car. Dude, everything. Everything is wrong with this thing. Are you joking? It didn't look this bad. I swear. It did not look this bad in the barn. Now that we've got it back home, it's a little, uh, it's a little different. A little different looking for sure. We also can't repair parts just yet. Let's see if we can at least unlock that that functionality. So we would have to expand the garage first, which is 10,000 credits, and then we could get a workbench, a brake lathe, a body repair station, engine tools, all that stuff. Kind of rough, man. Kind of rough. Uh, part of me thinks maybe we weren't ready quite yet for our first barn find, but it's cool, dude. We're just gonna, we're gonna try to get this thing operating. At the very least. That's all That's all I really want to see here. So we're just going to go around quickly and start marking everything that we notice needs replaced or just purchased in general. And it is quite a lot. <laughs> it's quite a lot. Not even going to sugarcoat it. We got two spark plugs over here. Valve cover. It's missing the power steering reservoir. The fuse box cover. It doesn't even have a battery, dude. Are you joking? Why did we buy this? Seriously, why did we buy this? Who let me buy this? And why is every single barn find missing the fuel pump? Like that just seems seems like a common thing for some reason. Okay, I think I've marked just about all the engine related things, engine, transmission, suspension, all that type of stuff. So I wanna do the exterior stuff next. We're gonna go to assembly mode and I'm gonna mark this fender and this fender and I think that's all it's missing. Right? It's got all the windows and everything else. Oh, tail lights. Okay, didn't realize it was missing a tail light. Now we're gonna hop into the bodywork store and actually purchase those few body panels really quick. 150. Oh, thank God, dude. These fenders are cheap as all get out. So two fenders is only 300 bucks. A tail light's surprisingly expensive at, uh, at 100 credits. We got a 5% discount though for 95. 
There we go. So that is all the body stuff now purchased. All I want to do is throw these new body panels on. And then I just want to see how much the price actually goes up having a completed body. Dude, look at that. That is insane. 2,000 credits worth of profit here. So we bought it for 15.7. We'd be able to sell it for 17.8 at the moment. That is freaking just, that's stellar. Okay, so we have the welder as well. I don't know if it's really gonna do anything to the vehicle, but I, I'd kinda like to use it anyways. 1100 credits. Yep, gotta do it. You know what, we gotta do it. Yeah, I don't think that really did a lick of anything. Let's see in a car status. Okay, 3200 now. That's actually way better. So the body value has increased. I've got gotcha. you. Condition bonus. Since we only have $3,200 left, I'm going to quickly move this vehicle to the paint shop so we can get uh, maybe a new color even on this thing. I, I, I wouldn't mind a new color. The red's not bad. We'll see what uh, what factory is supposed to be. Okay, factory is this sort of maroon color. I'm having a really hard time telling if the hood is just really this crappy. Like, look at how wavy and ripply it is, dude. And you can kind of tell here between the door and the rear quarter panel, the colors really aren't matching up very well. So that kind of leads me to believe maybe the door is also not 100%. And then the trunk, we got some surface scratching going on. I don't know, dude. Kind of tempted to disassemble the entire body and see what needs replaced. Maybe let's do that before we paint. Painting only costs a thousand credits. I say only, that's quite a quite a lot of money. <laughs> let's see what condition this hood's actually in. Oh, 60%. That's not near as bad as what it looks like. All right, I've gotten everything torn off the vehicle now. I think the worst part about this vehicle is actually just the hood. And it's it's not really worth replacing, in my opinion. 60% is, is still Still pretty good. I'm gonna go into the store really fast. I wanna try to find the steering wheel for this vehicle. I don't actually know how we would figure out what it had before. I guess we could probably look at uh, like the grayed out image from the steering wheel. Okay, yeah, that actually does help just a little bit, not a ton. It's either the steering wheel cape right here or this one, the steering wheel 15. I think it's 15. I remember seeing like a triple spoke in the center. So let's buy that 142 credits. Not really that bad. Okay, sweet. So we got a brand new steering wheel. I'm gonna leave the interior as it is. It, it doesn't look like it's in that bad of condition. We'll check the car status now. Okay, profit 3,400 credits. Not terrible. Now I think we should probably start going through and just purchasing all these other parts that uh, were otherwise missing from the vehicle. Dude, this is gonna be so good. I can't wait just to see after putting in like these reservoirs and actually topping all the fluids off, making sure there's oil in the engine and coolant in the, in the radiator here. I just have a really good feeling that the value is going to just skyrocket after we get this thing actually functioning. I really need to see if this thing has even a little, oh, it did have just the, the tiniest little bit of oil in it. Very good. Still though, I think the engine has uh, has seen better days. It is basically scrap at this point, but we're just trying to get her cobbled together so somebody, somebody will purchase it. Somebody who's really, really down on their luck, almost desperate in need of a vehicle. So we now have a fully functioning exhaust system with minimal leaks at best. And now that we got the oil drained out of it, we'll lower her back down, pop the hood one mo again, top off all the fluids, and we'll see what's left. I think I got everything else sorted anyways. We'll check the car status now. Holy crap, dude, $6,100 a profit. That would put us up to a sell value of 21,000 buckaroonies. So we started off this episode with 20,000-ish credits, we'd be making roughly 2,000 credits on this flip, which is not much, but it is something. As long as we're in the green, dude, that's that's all I care about. Speaking of green, look at all this, all this new stuff. Okay, I think that is the fluids now complete. I definitely wouldn't call this a restoration because I'm not really even sure if the vehicle runs yet, but let's take one good look at the car status now. Just from doing the fluids, I think it did go up maybe $100 or so. The sell value is now at 22,000, so that's nice to see. But there are just so many other parts that we don't necessarily know anything about. We haven't examined them very closely, and I'm kind of under the impression that 
the more we know about the vehicle, the higher the value will be. So I'm just going to go through every single diagnostic tool that we have and uh, just try to go through everything that we can. That way, the value might increase. You, you never know. Jesus Christ. Okay, I've kind of decided that if it's red, I need to replace it. So we have two more rocker arms underneath both of the brand new valve covers we already put on. So I got to pop one of those off, figure out where those two rocker arms are. Actually, it could be one over here and one over here. That'd be just my luck. But I do want to replace those. What we just finished was the compression tester. The last one we have to go through is the OBD2 scanner. And since this car is OBD1, we can't use an OBD2 scanner. So we have vintage tire wall A, rocker arm, and other rocker arm. Those all definitely need replaced. And we haven't even begun to test the suspension or anything related to that yet. So kind of nervous. We only have $1,200 currently so it does look like both of those rocker arms though are just underneath one valve cover so that's gonna save us just a little bit of time there we go got those two nasty boys popped on out of there and then the rear tire back here is in pretty rough shape if i do say so myself tires are so expensive though dude this is gonna be very very costly and probably not worth it in the in the long run let's get these two parts separated so we can see what size we actually need for this tire i do love the the white wall though that looks pretty rad especially on this this older car it just it's very fitting okay 225 75 15 tire wall a 225 75 there we go 15 205 for one of these tires really not all that bad oh i guess the rim itself is actually also in the red so we probably want to replace it. are any of the other ones in the red I don't think so. These are probably getting close, but I but I doubt it. So we got to check out the rim now as well. It's a Zephyr, Zephyr, 15 offset of zero. There we go. 15 offset of zero. Just one of those is going to be 76 credits. Not that bad. Not that bad. And now we have a brand new wheel and a brand new tire. That should definitely improve the overall value of the vehicle. I'm I'm sure of it. To be real with you guys, though, I, I definitely think we need quite a bit more uh, tools or... Uh, equipment i guess you could say if we're gonna do or even attempt another barn find or definitely if we're gonna attempt a uh, a junkyard car or anything of the sort but there we go we have that put on the vehicle oh and then we needed the other two rocker arms that's right there we go got both of those valve cover is back on the two rocker arms are now in Let's check the car status. Just make sure we're not missing anything that uh, is pretty shot. I think we're good. I think that's all the red stuff that we've that we've looked at. So that's going to bring our profit up to 6,800 credits. Not that bad. Not that bad. Let's go ahead and put some oil in the engine here. And we'll see if it improves even more, even further. We'll see if this vehicle has what it takes to go even further than beyond, dude. Okay, that did not change the, the profit at all and honestly we just spent money on oil and and didn't get anything out of it so it, it's no big deal i mean the engine did need oil in order to run anyways so now that the vehicle should hopefully be running i think what i want to do next is actually take it out to the test track so we're going to move the vehicle to garage entrance a now that we have it out here we can open the door oh and we don't have a thousand credits anymore so we can't respray the car i don't think that would have helped out the overall value as much as you would probably assume it would. But let's at least take this bad boy to... Engine can't be started. Why? Why? It actually can't be started. They weren't kidding. Something something else is, is very, very wrong here. And I have no idea what that might be. I swear, dude, this thing is like brand new. I mean, there's zero rust. Low miles. Okay, okay. I need to at least make sure that the vehicle has spark... It has air, and it has fuel. So right off the bat, I can tell you for sure that this air filter needs to be replaced. It is manky, dude. It is gross looking. So we're going to pop that sucker off. So that's air complete. Now moving around to spark. I'm going to take the ignition leads off. These three spark plugs appear to be in 
semi-working condition. This one, however, definitely not. So we're gonna mark one of those. Coming over to the other side, we have, I would say three pretty nasty spark plugs. So I'm gonna mark all three, pull those out of there. And since this vehicle has a distributor over here, I'm gonna pop this, this cap off and I wanna see what the rotor looks like. Ooh, that's pretty nasty, dude. Hang on, can we examine it? How do we actually just examine things? Okay, we, we can't, I guess, not from here. So let's pop it off. 17%. I'm gonna say that we should probably replace that. So we'll mark the rotor. I'm not gonna worry about the cap or anything else like that. Those those little clips, that doesn't matter. Probably could use a new fuel filter, so I'll just take that out. Okay, spark is pretty well covered, I would think. Air is pretty well covered. We started on fuel. I just wanna make sure that we have everything else in order here. What about the uh, what about the injectors? Oh right, it's uh, it's carbureted, and the carburetor is actually 54%. So I'd say that's pretty solid as well. I also know that we just replaced the fuel pump not that long ago, so I think we're all good there. Let's grab a new air filter. We got spark plugs. Okay, that stuff is in a different store, so we actually have to back out here. It's in the electronics store, so we need four of these spark plugs and one ignition distributor rotor. Okay, surely with those few additions, those few minor changes, the vehicle can at least start now, right? Yeah, just turn over, just turn over. It can't be this bad. It seriously cannot be that, it must be though. It, I mean, why else would it not turn over, right? I think it's safe to assume that any other working issues that this vehicle, that this engine would have is, is probably gonna be in the bottom end. Additionally, if we were to replace the, actually either head, either cylinder head, I think that would probably help as well. Electronically speaking, it seems pretty good. It definitely has fuel, it has air, it has spark, so it should turn over as long as the bottom end and the top end can hang. But I don't think they can hang in this case. So we're gonna close the hood on up. I gotta get a, a sick photo of this thing. We can't even take it anywhere to get a cool shot of it. I could put it in parking for the time being, and then we can travel to the alley, the parking alleyway that we haven't seen yet. Maybe there's a, a good scenery spot here that we can get a nice photo of it. Nope, doesn't look like it's that nice. Show car. Oh, weird. Weird. What? Okay, that's kind of cool, though, actually. Car preview. I like it. They really, like, took the, the garage thing very literally this time around. And they actually put the vehicle in a garage. Whereas in the previous game, CMS 18, I want to say it was like a parking ramp type structure. I like this a lot more. I think that's a lot cooler. And we can orbit the camera around. Nice, dude. Okay, this looks like a scene from Storage Wars, does it not? We're gonna have a bunch of people in here bidding on this uh, this old crappy unit here in a few minutes. You just wait. Okay, I got the vehicle moved back in front of our garage here, and I think the time has finally come to say sayonara to our beloved Lincoln Continental, the Mark V. What a beauty, what a gem. So we purchased the vehicle for 15,700-ish credits. We're now going to sell it for 22,700-ish credits with a total profit of around 6,900 credits, which is honestly pretty solid. I'm not going to lie. So there we go. We're going to sell her 22.7, accept, and there we be. So we really, I think we only made like 3,500 bucks, maybe even closer to like 3,000 bucks from that whole ordeal. We also got another achievement, little steps with like a, a credit like stonks. Honestly, most people would probably think that that was not worth it at all, just even remotely. But I do think that it really taught us, you know, we're not quite ready for restoration projects just yet. We need some more equipment. We need some more tools and stuff before we can uh, really get going on barn finds or vehicle flips, you know, all the all the fun stuff that comes along with Car Mechanic Simulator. But I think that's probably where we're gonna wind down this episode at for today. But once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching guys. Peace.